and we're in 2024, maybe by the end of this year, if I had to predict 250 by the end of this year, maybe. I mean, that, it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely be ramping up. And I mean, we've just seen how much the inflows to the ETFs have been like unbelievable. You know, uh, Jan van Eck was telling me his, his dad kind of, you know, pioneered. by the way, it's $250,000 yes, yes. yes. per Bitcoin. Yes. It's uh, a <laughs> yeah. folder in court. <laughs> I got it right. Exactly right. One time. <laughs> and then they keep asking me again in that my prediction of 250,000 in four years was did not happen. The 10,000 in three years, in 2014, on Fox Business, she asked me, what's going to happen to Bitcoin? And I said, and at that time, it was $180. I said, it's going to be $10,000 in three years. I, I'm still predicting Bitcoin, $10,000 per Bitcoin in three years. And almost three years to the day, it hit $10,000. And so then I thought, then I got hubris. Yeah. And I said, oh, I can predict anything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, it turns out that was a one-shot deal. When it dropped to 4,000, I said, okay, it'll hit 250,000 in four years. That was by 2022. We're now in 2024. Clearly, I was a little bit optimistic there. And I here's what I had not expected. I did not expect all the resistance from bureaucrats in a free country. I expected a free country to be a free country and allow the markets to decide what would happen out there. But the bureaucrats really fought back. Um, I think now the great leaders are the ones that trust people and set them free. And the weak leaders are the ones who try to control everybody with their fiat currency or whatever. The, the good leaders are coming back. The strong leaders are coming back and saying, hey, this is going to be really good for our country. This is going to be really good for the global economy. It's going to be a better thing. So um, I think we're getting to the point where that opens up. So that was those were two things I had projected out and thought were already going to happen. They are just starting to happen now. Just your thoughts on the halving and this cycle. Obviously, like you said, your your previous predictions weren't quite right in the last four years have been a, a very difficult uh, time. This halving, uh, this macro environment. Um, yeah, it, it kind of feels like Bitcoin summer and it hasn't been like that for eight years, I think. You know, if you're an investor in the stock market, they say, don't bet against the Fed. Yep. If you're a Bitcoin buyer, don't bet against the halving. <laughs> yep. That thing, that changes everything. The supply shrinks, the demand increases. Yep. It's, the price goes up. That's natural economic supply and demand. Yep. We're also getting to the point where it opens up at retail. 85% um, of retail is controlled by women. Only one out of about six Bitcoin wallets is held by a woman. When retailers realize that they can save 2% on every transaction if they accept Bitcoin, then, and when they start saying, I only accept Bitcoin, then the women will all have Bitcoin wallets and they will continue to control 80% of retail spending, but it will also be in Bitcoin. It, it depends on what you mean by a bull cycle, because when there is a run on the dollar, that's going to be a huge bull cycle into all the other assets. into the other s into uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. They are going to run, and that will create a huge bull cycle. It will be a more cataclysmic. I see. I think there is. I mean. Every time there's a having, which used to be called a having, yeah. Every time there's a having, the next time I'll be calling it the aching, <laughs> and then it'll be just like the H. <laughs> but um, we're gonna have a, a a reduction in supply, and when you have reduction in supply, there will be more demand. There will be a higher price. That, in general, will keep happening. But um, but I think the real, you know, the 
the point at which it all ends up stabilizing is when we no longer are using any fiat currencies, no government currencies, no political currencies, no currencies that any one you know, authority figure can manipulate. Um, just lastly, as an investor, you know, uh, it's never too late to, to invest in Bitcoin. Um, you know, for, for someone that's just getting into the space and is looking for some sort of exposure, I mean, you know, the advice varies like 1% of your portfolio, 10% of your portfolio. What do you think is a good exposure in, in this current climate? I mean, most people cannot just throw away or, or spend away all their fiat, right? You know, and you still have to live in the, the economy in which we live in. But what do you think is a, is a safe? Well, I think I, I, everybody has to make their own decision. But I was um, with a bunch of my friends and Bitcoin was, I think, 7,000. And, um, and I said to them, actually, it may have been 700. Um, and I said to them, look, just put 2% of your net worth into this thing. Something's going to happen here. It's going to be worth, may, may be worth nothing, but it may be like transformative to the global economy. So you may want to have some. And um, none of them took me up on my suggestion. And I would expect the exact same thing to happen to anybody that you're, that you're viewing audience, that they if they haven't bought Bitcoin by now, are they going to? Are they ever going to? Or are they going to just be a part of the people who are clawing at the bank to try to get their dollars out and try to get Bitcoin for it? I think if you, if you haven't bought some Bitcoin by now, um, <laughs> I mean, I think you should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I, the future I see is one where if you don't have some to take care of yourself when the dollars become worthless, there's going to be a hole in your, in your life. Yeah. You know, I tell uh, my companies, my startup companies, you now need a treasury, after Silicon Valley Bank went under, you now need a treasury strategy. And they say, well, what should it be? And I say, well, put some of it in a big bag, put some of it in a small bag, and some into Bitcoin. And first they say, wait, why a small bank? I say, well, because the government will bail out a small bank. But if a big, big bank goes under, it's you're in big trouble. <laughs> and then they say, well, why Bitcoin? And I say, because you're responsible for at least two weeks, maybe four weeks of payroll. And if any of your banks go under, or all of your banks go under, you're not going to have money to pay those people and you are going to be personally responsible for that money. So you better have something else. And Bitcoin's a perfect solution to that. Yeah, the reality is, it's quite crazy, actually, if you, if you think about it. Um, yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, that just as a parting thought, you know, the next next five years, it, it's never too late to, to buy Bitcoin. And you look at the proponents out there, forget about the price. It's you know, more about it the is too event. late to buy Bitcoin when there's a run on the dollar. Yes. I mean... People don't understand what that was like, unless they were a part of Silicon Valley Bank when it was yeah. collapsing in that, that Thursday to Sunday. Well, they, yeah. they got a little bit of a window of what happens when there's a run on a bank, exactly. when people are saying, I get my money out, I need my money out. Yeah. And guys like, Cir I mean, Circle, you know, USDC was directly impacted by that. And I, I don't think they foresaw it, you know? So, I mean, if a, if a stable coin issuer is, is having the same problem with a traditional bank, like it's a bit of an eye opener. Um, just and I've always thought stable coins were a bridge to Bitcoin. I've never thought of them as like a permanent part of our economy because they are tied to fiat. They're tied to political currencies. Yes. Now, if they're tied to Bitcoin and, and other altcoins, that's a little different. And I've seen some of those. Yeah. But if it's a stable coin tied to something that we're just comfortable with now, they're going down at the same time as the dollar goes down. Do you, do you see that happening in the future though, Nick? Uh, uh, you know, like uh, the dollar failing in the next 10, 20 years? I mean, what is the reality of that? It might be, I think when I can buy food, clothing, shelter, and pay my taxes all on Bitcoin, I don't need any more dollars and I will get rid of all of them. And I think that will be true of everyone. And they, 
they're just, it's just starting to dawn on people. And it's just starting to dawn on the retailers that they should be accepting Bitcoin and eventually only accept Bitcoin. But there will be a moment in time, and I don't know whether it's a day or a month or maybe over the course of two months or something, but, and I don't know when it will start, whether it'll be a year or five years or whatever, maybe even 10 years out, but it'll happen very rapidly. Um, people, people learn things very quickly now with you guys, with social media, with whatever. They learn things very quickly. If something is troublesome, if the dollar is not worth anything, they are going to be running to the bank almost immediately and taking that money out, trying to turn it into Bitcoin. And that's if you can get the money out. Yeah. Which you might be able to. Yeah. But I think it's going to be like Confederate dollars where... When the Confederacy lost to the Union, everybody was only, the only thing that anybody valued were Union dollars. And so people were printing million dollar, you know, Confederate dollars and trying to, you know, here, take Swap this, it. take this. Uh, but, but there's a moment where Confederate dollars are completely worthless. And I think the same thing could be happening in the next, I mean, what? Seven years? Sometime in the next seven years, I think that we will have that cataclysmic event. And I hope anybody who's watching this is going to at least have some Bitcoin so that they can feed their family during the time when the dollar goes to zero. We, we heard it from Tim Drake, but <laughs> hopefully, it, it, yeah. hopefully that doesn't come to fruition. But if you can, save yourself now. Right. It will, because I think it's going to be better for the world yes. to be operating in a trusted currency, in a trusted system, system not tied to political forces. Um, so I actually think that it, it will be a really good thing. The transition, though, I'm just hoping everyone owns some Bitcoin before that transition happens.